Tina Glory Jordan, District 1, Seat 2. David Walking Stick, District 1, Seat 3. Jody Fishing Hawk, District 2, Seat 3. Janelle Fulbright, District 3, Seat 2. Dwight Dick Lay, District 4, Seat 2. Kara Cowan Watts, District 5, Seat 2. Lee Keener, District 5, Seat 3. And Julia Coates, at large council person. Justice Dowdy. If all of you will repeat after me, raise your right hand and state your own name. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of council member of the Cherokee Nation Council and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation and the United States of America. I swear or affirm further that I will do everything in my power to promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. Good luck. <laughs> because of the vacancy in the principal chief's office at this time, uh, because of your position of speaker of the council, uh, the law re uh, requires that you act as the deputy principal chief until such time as the principal chief is elected and put in office. Uh, do you accept this responsibility? Yes, I do. Repeat after me. I, I Meredith, Meredith Fraley, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear or affirm that, I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the duties of acting deputy principal chief of the Cherokee Nation and will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation. The Constitution of the Cherokee Nation and the United States of America. And the United States of America. I swear or affirm further. I swear or affirm further that I will do everything within my power. That I will do everything within my power to pr promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. To promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. Congratulations. Raise your right hand, but repeat after me. <clears throat> I, and state your name. S. Joe Crittenden. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will faithfully execute the duties. That I will faithfully execute the duties. Of Deputy Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. Of Deputy Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation, the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation, and the United States of America, and the United States of America. I swear or affirm further, I swear or affirm further, that I will do everything within my power, that I will do everything within my power. To promote the culture, heritage, and traditions. To promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. Of the Cherokee Nation. Congratulations, Deputy Chief. First, I want to, as you've already seen them, but I want to introduce two people that are very, very special to me, and that's my grandchildren, Sydney and J.C. Fraley. Principal Chief Crittenden, and I can call you that now. <laughs> Former Principal Chief Smith and Byrd, Mr. Chief Justice Matlock and Justices, 
Tribal Council, and my fellow Cherokee citizens. As I so very humbly stepped forward to take the constitutional oath of office of Acting Deputy Principal Chief, I want to state clearly and without reservation that I believe in the Cherokee Nation and its people. Across the history of the Cherokee Nation, these inaugural ceremonies have been the embodiment of the rule of law through the orderly transfer of authority. Cherokees have given witness to these ceremonies for generations. What we view as routine every four years in the administration of these oaths and peaceful transition of leadership is in truth a unique expression of our civility and the empowerment of our government by the people. In the eyes of the world, this ceremony we accept as normal is nothing less than a miracle, considering the challenges faced by our forefathers and former leaders. They stood strong and left us a durable legacy that today is the bedrock of our inherent sovereignty, our self-determination, our self-reliance, and our self-sufficiency. Although the torch has been passed to Chief Critton and me only temporarily as Chief and Deputy Chief, I believe that we can demonstrate to a watching world that we are a united people, pledged to protecting those inherent attributes of our nation through self-governance. Whenever I was thinking about a title for my speech, I thought about Brian Jackson. And for, I don't know why I thought about him, but those of you who, do, who don't know him, he is our Cherokee, I believe, citizen. So I titled my speech, I Believe, because like Brian, I too believe in the Cherokee people and our government. And I believe during this short tenure of this administration that we can continue to make our government work with the people and not over the people, to stand side by side in building a brighter future for our nation. Our government has, and it will continue to provide opportunity for our people because after all, that is the role of government, to foster productivity and not stifle it. When we stop and take inventory and survey our holdings, we Cherokee citizens have much to be grateful and thankful. The businesses and enterprises of our nation continue on a profitable pace with growth and prudence. And we certainly can be proud of our economic status considering that the United States economy is confronted with economic affliction of great proportions. Our businesses and our government employ over 8,000 citizens. An investment in our people sustains the economy of our communities. Our nation generates a $1.3 billion economic impact in the counties of Northeast Oklahoma. And I don't know of any other governmental entity that can make that claim. And it's a real and a positive impact that underpins a better quality of life for Cherokees and non-Cherokees alike. If we look to the answer as to why we, the Cherokee people, for so many years have achieved so much and prospered as a nation, it's because our leaders, to a great extent, have helped unleash the energy and the genius of our Cherokee people. Dignity. <laughs> Dignity through self-determination and self-sufficiency it must be the bedrock of our modern culture. The price we have paid to safeguard our self-government has at times been quite high. And we must, just as did our forefathers, be willing to commit our resources and our passion to protect our inherent sovereignty and our inherent rights. 
I believe Chief Crittenden and I realize that the Cherokee Nation is too great a nation to limit ourselves to small dreams. We have every right to dream heroic dreams. We have, we have now Cherokee entrepreneurs with faith in themselves and faith in our, their ideas whose commerce creates new jobs, new opportunities, and lasting value. Those individuals not only affect our economy, but they contribute to our cultural fabric through their contributions to our churches and our charities. The support for the art that we cherish so much and a partnership in the unwavering belief that education is a pathway to individual choice. Our, our life as a nation is sustained by these values. And I believe Chief Crittenden and I are committed to demonstrating the compassion and the gadugi that is so much a part of our nation's makeup. So how can we love our Cherokee Nation and not love our citizens? And in loving them, how can we not extend a hand when they fall, care for them when they are sick, and foster opportunities for them when they seek self-sufficiency? The answer is simple. I believe we can do that for all citizens. We still have challenges to confront us in protecting our sovereignty and our self-determination. These are challenges that we have met, we've endured and overcome since before our removal from our homelands in the East. But the challenges of today take on new and more complex hues. Can we solve them? The answer is an unequivocal and emphatic yes. Chief Crittenden and I didn't take our oaths of office to, with the intention of presiding over the dissolution or the diminishment of our sovereignty or our strong economy. And I believe we, the Cherokees of today, are ready to act worthy of ourselves, ready to do what must be done to ensure the happiness and welfare of people, and especially for the nurturing of our children and our children's children. In the coming days, the challenges we face, while not as significant as the sacrifices of our ancestors, but they will require our best efforts. We must be willing to believe in ourselves and believe in our capacity to perform great deeds, to believe that together, with the help of our Creator, we can and we will resolve any challenges that confront us today or tomorrow. After all, why shouldn't we believe that? Because we're Cherokees and we don't ever give up. God bless you and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. It is with humility, gratitude, and honor that I stand before you on this beautiful Sunday afternoon as Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. First, I would like to acknowledge you, the citizens of the Cherokee Nation, the court, the council, my family, friends, and neighbors. I thank the Cherokee people for this opportunity to serve you from the executive branch of our government, where I feel I can be much more effective in making sure your needs are met. For the first time in Cherokee history, we are witnessing an historic occasion whereby our Constitution and extraordinary conditions within our election process have elevated your principal chief or your deputy chief to immediately begin serving as the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. This occasion also requires for the first time that the speaker of the council begin serving as the deputy chief. Although my tenure as principal chief may be brief, I have been entrusted with the momentous responsibilities of this office and I vow to always do the right thing for the right reason.
In the oath, I pledged an important commitment to each of you. I will faithfully execute the duties of Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation and preserve, protect, and defend both the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation and the United States of America. I will also do everything within my power to promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. This is the foundation I will stand upon in each decision I make. In my many years of service as a Cherokee official, the most disturbing element within the job has often been the politics that determine the decision or direction we take, rather than just doing what's the best for the Cherokee people. <laughs> Actions speak louder than words. My voting record is clear. I don't always do what is politically correct, but rather what I feel best serves you. In the role of leader, one faces many complex decisions because so many people are affected. The Cherokee Nation has over a billion dollars of revenue flowing through multiple departments on an annual basis. All live different lifestyles. As my good friend says, we are from one fire. The fundamental reason for this government to exist is to serve the Cherokee people with services that encompass the needs of this diverse group of citizens. This is not a simple process. Improvement begins with the attitude we promote within our operations. The most important thing that we must all understand is that we are here for one reason, to serve the Cherokee people. Our primary argument for every dollar of federal money we receive is based on the fact that we will serve the Cherokee people better than either the state or federal system. If we are not doing so, then we are falling short on our pledge to our people and to Congress. On a daily basis, two groups of people can improve our system of services, the people we serve and the people who provide these services. We need to be open-minded to suggestions of how our various programs can be more user-friendly and be swift to implement good ideas so that at the end of the day, a better system provides better services and we all win. The philosophy, doing the right thing for the right reason, is a fresh attitude I bring to our government that will benefit every Cherokee citizen from the recipient of services to those who provide these services. If we all try to exhibit this spirit, the world will be a much better place. It is a simple yet powerful concept. We need to understand that our services are not a handout. No, it's a hand up to our brothers and sisters. Whenever we are genuinely trying to help another person, we, in turn, help ourselves. We begin budget hearings for fiscal year 2012 in a little over one week. For those who may not know, our funding for the next fiscal year 2012 begins October the 1st of this year, 2011. We are being told that the budget will be about the same as it was for 2011. I would hope that we work through the hearings agree on and pass the new budget next month. Thank you. I, I talked a lot about the dividend we, we received from our casinos as I traveled the 14 counties and how it needed to be raised to help fund services to our people. Needless to say, this idea was very well received. I will begin to meet with the appropriate people soon and discuss how we can implement this idea. It seems from time to time that we forget whose money this is.
It belongs to the people. And government can be good stewards of your money by simply doing the right thing for the right reason. Extra casino dollars will be utilized to improve services to our people. Health care can be improved. I would like to see us offer more competitive salaries to doctors, dentists, and medical professionals. We need to put more into funding for our youth who pursue medical degrees. Let's keep our clinics and hospitals fully staffed so proper care can be provided. Our youth are our future. Education must be a top priority if we are to become self-sufficient as a nation. I want to see Pell eligible students get the same amount of scholarships as a student that is not Pell eligible. We have always been and will continue to be strong supporters of our education for our children. We need to once again build houses for our people. <laughs> our housing authority was once the best at this in the entire United States. That program, I am sad to say, no longer exists. What we now have is MAP or mortgage assistance and the self-help plan. Both of these programs work well for certain people, but not for all. We still need a housing program where we actually build houses for our people. With all three of these programs in place and working, we have the complete package. I will be looking at what is needed to get this started. Too soon our elders become our ancestors. We need to honor them today by restoring funds to elder care, free dentures, eyeglasses, pharmaceuticals, and a biannual elder assistance check. Our Our imperative service for those on fixed incomes, along with our elder care facilities, I would like to look at the possibility of building retirement centers for our elders. Our jobs growth has been steady, but some of the latest efforts have been outside our 14 county jurisdictional area. I would hope we can continue to diversify our efforts and attract industry into the Cherokee Nation through the advantages of locating their operations on trust land and then concentrate on hiring employees that are Cherokee tribal members. I know that we are all looking forward to the election on September the 24th, 2011. My desire is that this election goes as smoothly as possible, that a winner is clearly decided, and that we can have a chief elect sworn into office within a few days thereafter. The Cherokee people want and deserve closure to this election cycle. In the meantime, I will work tirelessly to make sure that services to our people continue without interruptions, and that this transition period is as seamless as possible. I appreciate this opportunity to serve each of you, and I will be striving daily to bring integrity, accountability, and transparency to our government. God bless the Cherokee Nation, and God bless the United States of America. Hold on.